Friday. Um, so glad you are here for our seventh grade presentation of the Station of the Cross. Uh, the performance time, run time, is about an hour? 40 minutes. 40 minutes. And then we'll have some quiet. You can just pray in the church, and at 1.30, we will have our solemn liturgy of Good Friday. Um, I'm going to introduce Dr. Bordlow, who is the principal of the school here, and she'll tell you a little bit more about what to expect. And then after her comments, we'll take up a collection. Um, on Good Friday, throughout the world, the collection is for the Holy Land, for the religious sites in the Holy Land for their upkeep and their maintenance, and um, they really can use our help. So I hope you'll be as generous as you can be. But before we take up the collection, I'd like to introduce Dr. Bordelow, uh, the principal of the school. Good afternoon. Um, this is such a special gift that we, the seventh grade class, um, are grateful to bring to the church. They have worked for the last couple of months to really bring to you the living Stations of the Cross and an enactment of, um, of this, the last days of Jesus. Um, there is songs, and we ask you to sing along with our, can our amazing cantors and take this time to reflect and um, learn from what the lessons of Jesus' life. And thank you for coming. The first station, Jesus is condemned to death. After he had been arrested, Jesus was brought before Pilate, the Roman governor, to be questioned. Are you the king of the Jews? You say that I am. But Jesus made no further comment. Pilate had the custom of releasing a prisoner each year at festival time, anyone the people asked for. There was a man who had killed someone in a recent fight, a man called Barabbas. So Pilate asked the people, Do you want me to set free the king of the Jews for you? We want Barabbas. Give us Barabbas. Then what am I to do with the man whom you call king of the Jews? Crucify him. Why? What crime has he committed? Crucify him. Crucify him. Pilate set Barabbas free and handed Jesus over to be crucified. See how hard and fast he is breathing? He is afraid. Yes, he could stop these men if he wanted, because he is the Son of God. 
but then who would make up for our sins? So Jesus is going to let it happen because he loves us so. He wanted to save us and win heaven for us. Put your hand in his. Let him know you care. Whisper in your heart, Jesus, I'm here. I'll stay with you. The second station, Jesus carries his cross. The soldiers marched Jesus away inside the courtyard of Pilate's residence and called their whole company together. They dressed Jesus in a purple robe and twisting some thorn twigs into a crown, they put it on his head. They then began to salute him. They hit him on the head with a stick, spat at him, and then bowed low before him on bended knee. When they had finished their fun with him, they took off the purple cloak and dressed him again in his own clothes. They led him outside to crucify him. Whisper in your heart, Jesus, make me brave like you. The third station, Jesus falls the first time. Already, Jesus was so tired and weak, he'd had no sleep, nothing to eat or drink, and the cross was heavy. But Jesus set out on the journey to the place of crucifixion. After a short time, he fell under the weight of the cross. The soldiers didn't care. They grabbed him and forced him to keep going. Think that you put your arms around him. Whisper to him in your heart, Jesus, teach me to be loving like you.
fourth station, Jesus meets his mother Mary. On the way to the cross, Jesus soon came near his mother. She had given birth to him, held him, taught him as a child about God the Father, about prayer. There's a communion between this gentle mother and her son, as the birth of her son was a part of God's plan. She knows that his suffering and death are part of God's plan. It's not hard to feel the sadness and pain that were in Mary's heart. She shared everything with her son. He shared everything with her. Both Mary and Jesus want to do what God wants them to do because they know what God wants is always good for us. Whisper to him in your heart, Jesus, help me to do what you want me to do. The fifth station, Simon helps Jesus to carry the cross. The soldiers were in a hurry. They had a job to do and wanted to get it over with. So when they saw this man, Simon, a stranger in the crowd, passing through the city, he did not want to be involved, but the soldiers grabbed him anyway and forced him to hold up the cross behind Jesus. Mother Teresa used to say, that Jesus is found today in a distressing disguise, a person suffering from illness, a homeless person dying in an alley, a friend going through difficult times. Would we help him to carry his cross today? Whisper to him in your heart, Jesus, I want to be proud like Simon that I helped you with your cross. The sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We're not sure who Veronica was. Maybe someone who had been with Jesus all along, following him, watching his miracles, hearing his words, and the stories he told. Or maybe she was someone who happened to be passing by on this day. She saw all that was taking place. Her heart was sad. And she stepped out of the crowd to bring Jesus this gentle comfort. Jesus left the image of his face on the cloth that Veronica had used as a sign of his thanks. Christ has no body now but yours. What's important to God is what's in our hearts. If our hearts are, are good and kind, that is the best and most important thing. Whisper in your heart, Jesus, print your face on my mind and heart so that I may, be, so that I may learn to be more like you.
the seventh station. Jesus falls the second time. Jesus walks through the streets, as so many had before. Though he was unjustly condemned in the gospel, Jesus said he came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life in ransom for the many. Jesus continues walking to the place where he will die, on the cross. He falls under the weight of the cross. The soldiers grab him and roughly pull him to his feet. In thinking about Jesus at this time, you remember the words of Isaiah the prophet from many years before. It was our weakness that he carried, our suffering that he endured. While we thought of him as stricken, as one struck by God and afflicted, but he was pierced for our offenses, crushed for our sins. Upon him was the punishment that makes us whole. By his stripes we were healed. You were not there when all this happened, but remember, what you do or say to Jesus now counts as if you had been there. eighth station, Jesus meets the weeping women. The gospel tells us that a huge crowd of people were following Jesus on the way to the place of execution. At one point, Jesus passed by a group of women who were crying. He looked at them and said, Jesus invited people to hear him and to follow him. He was sad when so many refused to follow and went off in another direction. Maybe Jesus looked into the heart of these women and wondered if they were going to follow him. What if we had been in the crowd and Jesus stopped in front of us, looking into our eyes and our hearts? What would he say about our love and our faith? Whisper to him in your heart, Jesus, Help me to have eyes and heart full of love and compassion for others. May my faith in you never falter. ninth station. Jesus falls a third time. We are walking with Jesus as his disciples. and We remember that he tells us in the gospel, you cannot be my disciples unless you take up your cross and follow me. When we see him once again fallen, we remember his other words. This is my commandment, that you love each other as I have loved you. There is no greater love than this, that a man should lay down his life for his friends. Whisper to him in your heart, Jesus, 
You are a hero. May I always remember to praise you. The tenth station. Jesus is stripped of his garments. In the scriptures, remember the words about Jesus stripping himself of glory and taking on the form of a servant, becoming man, just like us. He has held nothing back for himself. He gives everything away. The soldiers had no idea who he was. To them, he was just another prisoner, and the sooner he died, the better. They took his robe and they threw dice to see who would get it. In this station, we think again of the reason Jesus went through so much, his incredible love for you and me. In looking at his robe, we think about the day we became followers of Jesus. The day we were baptized, the priest said to us, you have clothed yourself in Christ. How hard have we tried to learn about him and to follow him? Should we be making any changes? The 11th station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. We can only imagine what Jesus felt here because he was God. He could have tuned out all the suffering. He could have pretended, gone through the motions of crucifixion, but canceled the actual suffering. But Jesus didn't. His pain was very real. So was his love. In St. John's Gospel, we hear this story of what happened after Jesus had been nailed to the cross. Jesus' mother was standing near his cross with her sister and with them, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. Jesus saw his mother and the, and the disciples whom he loved standing by her side and said to her, Mother, there is your son. And then he said to the disciples, And there is your mother. Mary was close to her son in his suffering and death. When someone we know, someone we love, is very sick, sad, angry, or hurt, we should look at Mary and pray for the gift of compassion.
12th station, Jesus dies on the cross. After Jesus had been nailed to the cross in between two other criminals, Jesus spoke these words from his heart. Father, forgive them. You do not know what they're doing. The people were standing by and watching. Some of the leaders were saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the chosen one of God. Even the soldiers laughed at him. They yelled up at him. If you were the king of the Jews, then save yourself. One of the criminals, hanging there, hurled insults at Jesus, saying, Aren't you the Messiah? And save yourself and us. Don't you fear God? You received the same sentence he did. Ours, however, is only right because we are getting what we deserve for what we have done. He has done no wrong. Remember me, Jesus, when you come as king. I promise that today you will be in paradise with me. There was darkness over the whole land. It had lasted until mid-afternoon. Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. Because of an eclipse of the sun, Jesus cried again, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Jesus breathed his last saying, It is finished. Please kneel. A centurion, who witnessed all these events, gave glory and praise to God and said, Truly, this man was the Son of God.
13th station, Jesus is taken down from the cross. As the Gospel of Mark tells us, in the evening on the day before the Sabbath, a man named Joseph from Arimathea went with great courage into Pilate's presence and asked for the body of Jesus. Joseph was a wise man, a man of faith, who was ready to accept the kingdom of God. Pilate was surprised that Jesus could be dead already, and he sent for the centurion to ask about this. On hearing the centurion's report, Pilate gave the body of Jesus to Joseph. Joseph brought a linen sheet and took Jesus down from the cross. Fourteenth station, Jesus is placed in the tomb. Joseph and the friends of Jesus took his body and walked a short way to a new tomb, which had been cut out of solid rock. They placed Jesus' body there, then rolled a large stone over the entrance of the tomb. Then the friends of Jesus went away. We know that in just three days, Jesus rose from the dead. The stone was rolled away from the tomb. Jesus' friends went looking for his body, but found only the sheet that had been around him. Jesus, the risen Lord, appeared to his disciples after his resurrection. As his disciples today, we can meet the risen Lord at every Mass, in the words of, the, of Scripture, and in the gift of his body and blood, Holy Communion. We can meet him when we pray. We can meet him when we're thinking about all that Jesus went through because of his love for us. We want to hear again Jesus' words to his first disciples, I am the vine and you are the branches. If anyone remains in me and in I, in them, they will bear much fruit. Because apart from me, it is impossible for you to do anything. Jesus is living within us. Will we bring his love and peace to this world?
Thank you everyone for joining us um, for this beautiful representation of the Stations of the Cross by our seventh grade class. Um, I hope you found it as deeply moving as I did today and have every time I've seen the class do this. The children have worked so hard over the last several months to, to bring you this, so I hope it has touched your heart. And uh, they're standing in the back of the church. I know it's Good Friday, but maybe we could give them a round of applause for a job well done. So um, it's now almost 12.40. Um, our Good Friday liturgy will begin at 1.30. Um, so I hope many of you will stay or come back for that uh, solemn liturgy of Good Friday. Thank you again for joining us. God bless you.